Well, good morning, kids. Uh, we're so glad you're with us for another Sunday morning of Children's Church. Uh, last week, we had a great time with Miss Tina. She taught us. And this morning, I want to introduce you to your new teacher, Miss Shannon. Hi, boys and girls. I'm so excited to be back with you this month. I didn't get to see y'all last month through the video camera, but I'm excited to be back and worship with you guys. Um, first, we are going to do our call to worship. So let's everybody be prepared to worship the Lord, and let's say this together. Um, this, one, this time it comes from Chronicles 16, 23, 24. Sing to the Lord all the earth, Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. And let's just say it one more time for those of you that may not be able to read and you want to still be able to participate. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. All right, again, that was Chronicles 16, 23, 24. All right, now we are going to say a prayer, which is one of the ways that we worship God. So let's bow our heads and prepare ourselves for worship today. Dear God, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here with the children today. And to the thank you for the parents for turning this on and having the children watch this week after week. I thank you, Lord, for the people behind the scenes that put this together and the technology that allows this to happen so that we can still be connected. Um, let's prepare our hearts for wor and minds for worship. And it's in your beautiful name we pray. Amen. All right. And so now we are going to have a special uh, praise song with Caleb. So everybody, let's stand up and get ready to sing. For God alone, I wait in silence. My soul is still before the Lord. He is my rock and my salvation, my fortress strong. I trust in Him. I'll not be shaken. I'll not be shaken for all my hope. Is in his love from God alone comes my salvation. I wait and trust his steadfast love. Put not your hope in gain of riches, seek not your rest in the rich are weak, the poor are mighty, who turn to God alone for help. I'll not be shaken, I'll not be shaken, for all my hope is in His love from God. I wait and trust His steadfast love. Pour out your heart to God our refuge and trust in Him to hear you cry. No other hope will never fail you no other love will not run dry. I'll not be shaken, I'll not be shaken, for all my hope is in His love. From God alone comes my salvation. I wait and trust His steadfast That 
was so much fun, right? All right, so now that we have a new memory verse. I think you started it last week with Miss Tina. So let's go and see if we can get through some of this. And maybe you can by now have half of it memorized. So love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind and with all of your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbors as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And this comes from Mark 12, verse 30 through 31. All right, let's say this one more time and really think about what this means. It seems like it should be so easy, but some of this is actually very hard to practice in real life. But let's go through it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This means we should love God with everything we have all the time. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. And I encourage y'all this week to take this second part as you try to memorize it, because maybe you have the first part memorized. Let's take this second part, and I encourage you to put it into action this week. See if you can do something that shows love this week to your neighbor. It could be as simple as bringing in someone's mail. It could be picking up trash in your neighborhood. It could even be making something and taking it to a neighbor. So let's see if y'all can do this second part of loving your neighbor as yourself. Mark 12, 30, and 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength the second is this love your neighbor as yourself there is no commandment greater than these there is no commandment greater than these love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength the second is this love your neighbor as yourself love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength the second is this love your neighbor as yourself there is no commandment greater than me there is no commandment greater than me. There is no commandment greater than me. There is no commandment greater than me. There is no commandment greater than your heart and with all your soul and with all your There is no commandment greater than this love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than your heart and with all your soul and with all your There is no commandment greater than this love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than your heart and with all your soul. All right, now we are going to go into another prayer, which again is another way we worship our God. And then we are going to follow that with the Lord's Prayer. All right, so let's bow our heads 
Dear God, thank you so much for letting us learn about your word today. And please prepare these children's hearts and minds to hear the message that you want them to hear today. And to please remember that you are always there for us and that we never have to worry about anything. And now we are going to pray as you taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. So now we are going to go into our confession of faith. All right, so in February, we talked about the Ten Commandments, um, and then what is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? So people wanted to know what is the law that the Ten Commandments want us to follow. So the answer is, you shall have no other gods before me. That one's not, that one's pretty, I think, good for most kids. We understand we shouldn't have another God before us. I feel like this one's a little bit more difficult for some people sometimes. Myself too. You shall not make for yourself an idol. And sometimes in this world, idols can be sneaky and you don't realize that you've created an idol. It can be something as as simple as video games, television, anything that you might put before God, even not realizing it. Um, And three, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Um, God has a very sacred name, and we should definitely only use that when we are talking about God or worshiping God. So now we're going to move on to question nine. What does God require in the first, second, and third commandments? So hopefully you remember the, com- the Ten Commandments that you have learned, and specifically we're going to hone in on those first three. So first, that we know God as the only true God. Second, that we avoid all idolatry. And third, that we treat God's name with fear and reverence. So we hold God's name to be very sacred and are very careful with how we use this. And we are going to now go to a song that will help you remember this.
right, boys and girls. So now we're going to go to my favorite part of Children's Church where we actually get to see and hear the story um, and learn the lesson that Jesus has prepared for us today. It's called the Captain of the Storm, which is which actually sounds very exciting. So sit back and listen to the story. Zonda Kids presents the Jesus Storybook Bible. Every story whispers his name. Written by Sally Lloyd-Jones and read by David Suchet. The Captain of the Storm The sun was going down. The air was warm and still. Let's go across the lake, Jesus said to his friends. Jesus had been helping people all day, and now he was tired. So they left the crowds at the shore and set out in a small fishing boat. Jesus climbed into the boat to take a nap. As soon as his head touched the pillow, he fell fast asleep. It was a beautiful evening. A gentle breeze rustled the sails. The friends were chatting happily as they headed out into the middle of the lake. Everything was perfect, just right for a nice, quiet sail. They were only about halfway across when, out of nowhere, Whirling winds swept across the lake, fierce and strong like a hurricane. A blinding flash of lightning lit up the sky. Thunder roared right overhead. The storm blew the water into towering waves that hurled the little boat up, 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 and then sent it hurtling, crashing back down, down, down. The fishing boat was blown and buffeted and tossed and turned back and forth, up and down, left and right, round and round. And in the middle of the storm, Jesus was sleeping. Now, Jesus' friends had been fishermen all their lives, but in all their years fishing on this lake, they had never once seen a storm like this one. No matter how hard they struggled with their ropes and sails, they couldn't control their boat. This storm was too big for them. But the storm wasn't too big for Jesus. Help! they screamed. Wake up! Quick, Jesus! Jesus opened his eyes. Rescue us! Save us! they shrieked. Don't you care? Of course Jesus cared. And this was the very reason he had come, to rescue them and to save them. Jesus stood up and spoke to the storm. Hush, he said. That's all. And the strangest thing happened. The wind and the waves recognized Jesus' voice. Well, they had heard it before, of course. It was the same voice that made them in the very beginning. They listened to Jesus, and they did what he said. Immediately, the wind stopped, the water calmed down. It glittered innocently in the moonlight and lapped quietly against the side of the boat as if nothing had happened. The little boat bobbed gently up and down. There was a deep stillness and a great quiet all around. Then Jesus turned to his wind-torn friends. Why were you scared? he asked. Did you forget who I am? Did you believe your fears instead of me? Jesus' friends were quiet, as quiet as the wind and the waves, and into their hearts came a different kind of storm. What kind of man is this? they asked themselves anxiously. Even the winds and the waves obey him, they said, because they didn't understand. They didn't realize yet that Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus' friends had been so afraid they had only seen the big waves. They had forgotten that if Jesus was with them, then they had nothing to be afraid of, no matter how small their boat or how big the storm. 
Wow, wasn't that amazing? How amazing to think that Jesus stopped a storm by just speaking. Can you imagine the power behind that? I enjoyed looking at this story because it almost gave a humanistic quality to Jesus because he was sleeping, which I don't know why that relates to me in a humanistic way, but maybe it does to you too, to think he must have been exhausted to be sleeping through a storm. Maybe some of you have uh, slept through storms and you woke up in the morning and there was disaster everywhere, but you didn't hear any of it. Um, But then you see this amazing quality where he just wakes up and then just says, hush or silence and everything just stops and not just the wind it wasn't just the wind that stopped because that could have been coincidence right it was the wind and the water everything immediately stopped that is the power of your God and we have the armor of that power with us all the time and so we never have to worry about anything so I encourage you as you go throughout your week as you go throughout your life as you grow up remember that you do not have to bear the burdens of this world you are not alone you have the armor of God with you and he is all powerful he is powerful enough to stop a storm with just words so And remember that as you go throughout your week and your life. All right, and it has been a great week getting to be with y'all, or a great Sunday getting to be with y'all. And we will leave it with Mr. Jeff to take you through the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, kids, I hope you all had a great time with us today. I know I had a great time. Uh, We want to thank Miss Shannon for doing such a great job in leading us and worshiping Jesus together and learning together. Um, And now please stand with me for our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.